welcome to Average Outdoorsman's um, turkey hunting video series. Um, I guess that's the most creative name we're going to come up with it. So, um, for this one, we are going to be going over turkey calling strategies. So, this isn't necessarily learning to call with one type of call or the other. Um, I may explain why one may be beneficial in certain situations, but for the most part I'm going to use this one so that I don't have to take the other one in and out of my mouth the whole time. That's what she said. So, I don't ever make a call until it's light out enough that I would take a shot right then. Because in turkey hunting, situations can happen really fast and you have to be prepared. So before I ever start calling, it's gotta be light out enough to take a shot and either my bow or my gun has to be ready to roll. Um, I'll do a, a couple soft tree yelps like this. Just as low volume as I can do and still do well on this call. Um, you can always get louder in your calls, but it's harder if you kind of spooked some birds with how loud your calling is and then try to back off than it is to play it quiet and where they may not hear as well or as precisely of the area you're calling from um, as if you were calling louder. So I always start call, start calling quietly. So when I hear a tom gobbling, I think he's either alone or separated from other hens. Usually when toms are completely surrounded by hens in the same tree they're roosted in, they don't do a lot of call and there's no need to. So I zero in on where these toms are calling from and when they're not calling, I start doing these soft tree yelps. And then I get a little bit louder, a little louder, until it's really crisp daylight and usually there's like a cutoff time, it seems like just after like day break what I would call like where it's nice and bright out um, it seems like all the gobbling just stopped and when that happens I back it down I sit I put my call down for 15 minutes or so keep my ears open keep my eyes open just keep an eye out and it's not untypical to go from about you know seven in the morning where everything quiets down you know, to like 8.39. And then it seems like about nine o'clock, a lot of times things start to amp back up. So I, at that point, I think the toms that spent their morning with the hens they flew down with, now the hens have kind of made their way off and the toms are still um, looking for action. So they're kind of back on the scene after a few hours of daytime. So at that time, if I haven't seen anything, a lot of times I'll do one soft yelping, uh, strike like this if I don't hear anything I don't have any reason to believe there's any turkeys really close to me I'll start doing some real aggressive cutting uh, turkeys are real curious sometimes if they they don't feel like they're in danger so I'll do some cutting like this Sometimes you can really go at it and I've heard turkeys nearby doing this in real life and it sounds so much like that it, it really sounds kind of wild but it sounds like they're having a crazy party but they're just excited about something or they're kind of getting into a spat or something uh, so I'll make one of those calls when I don't feel that there's any birds real close by and then I'll kind of just be quiet for maybe five minutes and then I can go into some other sequences um, so the next scenario I want to talk about is when there's a tom in sight but out of shooting range. This is where a lot of hunts kind of fall apart. So when a tom is in sight but not in shooting range or not in a spot where you can get a shot, I always play it easy because a tom's or a turkey's sense of hearing is very precise. They'll pinpoint where the sound that they hear that where it's coming from. Um, so I always play it real soft, almost to hopefully kind of trick that turkey's ears into thinking maybe I'm farther away so that if he does look in my direction, 
hopefully his attention will be focused past me and not on me. If I have some um, decoys set out, hopefully he will see the decoys, think that they're the ones making the sound. You know, every, the whole picture adds up. There's sound, there's turkeys. You know, nothing seems out of the ordinary. Maybe he'll make his way in. The other option that you can do when a tom is in sight um, is just do some light purring with uh, some putts in between. And sometimes just those soft little purring and putting kind of sounds um, can just be reassuring to a Tom that's maybe kind of leery of the situation maybe if he just suspects something's not right no matter what it is or it's something he saw or heard or suspected or whatever it is um, so some sometimes you can kind of calm the situation a little bit by doing some purring like that and allowing that Tom hopefully to just kind of wander their way in boy sometimes Tom's will just spend time just roaming around right in your sight but always out of range it seems like and they'll you know strut around and strut around and strut around for an hour sometimes and never come in range and it can definitely be frustrating but getting to kind of talk back and forth with them is a lot of fun um another another situation that i have heard about and actually have used in a couple situations successfully is calling to the hen so the idea is if you can call a hen into shooting range, hopefully that live actual hen will draw in a tom into shooting range. So um, really the only successful way I've been able to do it is kind of to, um, in my mind, I think like I'm arguing with the hen. So if I hen hear, hear another hen, so if I hear another hen, yelping um you know in the distance i'll cut her off and i'll start yelping real loud and maybe just a little bit faster in my sequence of yelping um just like i'm you know kind of stirring the pot and usually they'll kind of cut off when you cut in and then just kind of quiet down and just wait for them to make make the next move soon as they start yelping cut them off again and I've been able to get hens really fired up that way, and it's a lot of fun just calling back and forth like that. Another option for hunting toms is the gobble call. Um, I don't know, Some seems like people have a lot of um, very strong opinions whether or not a gobble call is useful um, on either side of the debate. I'm kind of uncertain, I guess, at this point. Um, I can't say I've ever really used it successfully, but I can't say it's ever hurt anything. Um, so the idea using a gobble call is to strike up a Tom's uh, dominance um, aggression. Uh, and in the spring when you're hunting them, they can be very, very aggressive. Uh, so that's why sometimes this call is just dynamite. If you just are using it at the perfect time and you're using it in a realistic way um, and if you have a Jake or a, or a Tom decoy to really seal the deal um, it can really make a big difference um, so the idea on using a gobble call is when you have a Tom usually that's hung up <clears throat> usually a Tom is hung up or where you can hear or see them but they're not coming in into shooting range that's what we consider a Tom that's hung up or hinned up. So usually the case is the Tom is with hens and you can't get him to leave the hen or hens that he's with and come over to you. So, and usually that's when we're trying the yelping and the purring and other things. So if you can't attract that Tom by um, appealing to his sexual desires, then hopefully you can use a gobble call to appeal to his dominant aggression um, and get him to come over looking for a fight. Like I said, if you have a, a Jake or a Tom decoy, sometimes they can come in very, very quick and very, very aggressively. Um, so sometimes you can use a gobble call successfully as well. As far as the owl call, um, I haven't really just had much 
use for it. Uh, so most turkey hunters use an alcohol early in the morning when they're going out before first light, before the goblin kind of starts, or just after first light, and you do some owl hooting, and a lot of times the toms will shock gobble, where they gobble as they do when they gobble back to a hen, um, but it's because something startles them. So sometimes you can startle them and get their location. Like I said, where I'm at, I hunt the same area year after year, so I know a general area where they'll probably be, or at least where I can call them into. But if you're hunting an unfamiliar area, public ground, somewhere you're not really sure what the turkey hunting is like, an owl call can be very um, useful and effective. The other thing I'll mention about uh, calling turkeys specifically with the friction call is that when you use a friction call, it's the call that requires the most movement um, and uh, requires you to use both hands. There are some devices I've seen that hold the um, pot call in place while you can use a striker with just one hand. That, that's kind of nifty, but still requires the most movement no matter what. And especially if you're not in a ground blind, this is um, a concern. Um, so you have to be cautious on when to use a call like this and when to switch over to say the mouth call. When a tom's coming in close, I always switch over to the mouth call. There are certain things I cannot do as well on the mouth call, uh, such as purring, um, but I can at least do the yelping and the cutting um, if I need to get him to stop or something really quickly for a shot. Uh, you can, usually can get his attention that way or if he starts wandering off, can kind of yelp him back around and into range or whatever the case may be. And turkeys have an amazing uh, eyesight. Sometimes they will spot the slightest of movements, even inside of a ground blind, they can spot the slightest of movements sometimes if they just happen to be looking in the right direction at the right time. Um, so you have to be very careful with your movements and uh, with your sounds in even in a ground blind. Um, but especially when you're just out in the open or up against a tree or whatever it may be. So if you have any questions or comments regarding turkey calling strategies um, or have any um, thoughts for another video or maybe some questions or something I can turn into a video, just comment down below and subscribe for more videos. I am going to have some more on turkey hunting. So again, if you have any questions or comments, let us know. And we hope you enjoy our videos.